Hello everybody, this is FHRC Brony, and um, I don't really make these kind of videos, especially with RCs, um, where I really go ahead and talk about it. So, let's go ahead and talk about this one over here. Uh, this is actually Project Eau Rouge, and have you guys seen my, my previous videos regarding Project Eau Rouge, you would notice that I did mention this is a Rustler build. And yes, I did build this from the ground up. And I must say, I really enjoyed it. And um, I had my Xbox on still. Um, this is actually the first um, RC build I ever done um, where I actually, um, just built it from the ground up so it's none of like I got an existing rustler and then I just go ahead and build it up uh, and made it look better what I did here is it's kind of more of the basic route um, normally people would and when they build RC's they like to go ahead and start off with a with a naked chassis and then they just go all out putting aluminum and all that crazy stuff uh, for me, I decided to go to a different path and go as low budget as I can without having to spend like almost $500. Um, and well, I actually, I can tell you this right now, this thing is nowhere near $500. I can tell you that right off the bat. Um, but um, I kind of want to go to in the low budget range. So at least, cause especially for someone like myself, I never actually did a rustler or an RC build myself. I never built an RC from the ground up. So here it is. This is what I got. And hopefully you actually really do have some really good thoughts about it. If you guys don't, that's fine. I really do like to hear your opinions on it. So I want to go in ahead and show you the, um, a little quick tour, I should say on how I actually did the Rustler two-wheel drive build. First of all, exterior. Um, let me move it a little bit further from the camera. And by the way, I got two Rustlers over there that's currently in need for restoration. That is a electric Rustler on the bottom and that's a nitro Rustler on the top. So um, right after I get my uh, upcoming planned TRX4 sport unassemble uh, kit. I'll get those things uh, restored soon um, Not as soon as I like uh, but eventually uh, right after I get my TRX4 because I'm wanting to get a crawler and to add to my collection um, anyways exterior details Traxxas Rustler two-wheel drive build Project Bell Rouge so exterior look I'm sorry, exterior looks, this looks like a Rustler 4x4. Um, it has the Traxxas Rustler 4x4 body, Traxxas Rustler uh, 2.8 uh, Talon tires. I believe these are Talon, uh, Talon EXT 2.8 inch tires that you'll find in the Rustler 4x4. So yeah, outside looks like a Rustler 4x4, except uh, the front bumper and... But aside from that, it looks like a Rustler 4x4. And that was actually my intent to do. I was going to go ahead and stick with the regular Rustler body. I, I do have the a regular Rustler body over here in this little uh, dresser with a broken panel. I was going to put one of these uh, regular rustler bodies on Project Eau Rouge, but I was like, you know what? I didn't want to go really basic and plain with that. So I decided to do something a little bit different and I gave this thing a lot of thought because I thought the rustler 4x4 body will not fit on the rustler two-wheel drive platform and indeed it's not perfect as you can see over here that the chassis is quite sticking out a little bit and um, 
But to be honest with you, it's not really a big deal with it. And also, it is that chassis is black, and I'll get into that in a bit. Um, and speaking of which, this the, my color combination of choice for this one is black and red. So at least um, that black part where the chassis is sticking out kind of, you know, makes it a little bit nice. Uh, some people will have different opinions on that, which is fine, you know. I would like to hear your opinions on it. So, but for me personally, I actually do like it myself. So, the Russell 4x4 body, uh, it was really a quite a hard decision to, for me to make because it's I had to do a lot of um, work just to have the body uh, be able to fit on the two-wheel drive Rustler platform. Um, and yes, uh, for those who own Rustler 4x4s, I know what you guys are going to be asking. Did you attempt to do the... Um, the uh, clipless body mounts and the answer to that is a plain and simple no number one I don't know how to do that myself like how to re-engineer and re and do some modifications to the traditional Rustler 2x2 two by, two by two, <laughs> two wheel drive um, Rustler 2 wheel drive platform I have no idea how to, how to do any sort of modification or do any re-engineering work just to get the clipless body mounts onto that and I honestly, I, I did give it some thought because I wanted to see how it looks like, but unfortunately, it did not execute well, and it's also kind of a waste of money to do so and some time. So I decided to go with the traditional um, body clips, which is okay, and it was a lot more easier for me to tackle. And for those who are also wondering, is the Rustler 4x4 body... Uh, fit the dimensions of the Rustler two-wheel drive? I would say yes and no. No being that the Rustler 4x4 itself, uh, when I got this body, I did a lot of research. I did research on the uh, Rustler 4x4 on Traxxas's website, and I did a little bit of comparison between of the dimensions of the Rustler two-wheel drive also in Traxxas's website. And there, the dimensions of the Rustler two-wheel drive is slightly shorter than the Rustler 4x4, like both in track width and wheelbase. They are really, really close to their, uh, as far as their dimension is concerned. So that's where the yes part comes into play. Yes, you can technically put a Rustler 4x4 on a Rustler two wheel drive. It's just, you gotta do a lot of work to that. Uh, just, you gotta do plenty of work um, to align the body, the body mounts, and, um, or if you're going to try to do a clipless body, body mount setup, that's going to take a lot of works, but I decided to do the, um, uh, traditional body clips. So yeah, to, if you want to do a, if you want to put a Rustler 4x4 on a two wheel drive Rustler, yes, you can, you can do it. It's just, it's going to take a little bit of work and more tinkering uh, compared to just slapping in a regular Rustler body onto your Rustler two wheel drive. So yeah, like I said, it can be done. So uh, a lot of rambling about <laughs> about the body, and yes, like I said, uh, no clipless body mounts. And that's where the little um, latch that will lock the um, clipless body mount setup onto the shock tower on the Rustler 4x4. And fortunately, I did not do that, so I decided to do do the clip part. And you also notice. Hey, isn't that where the third hole, where the um, body mounts should go? Why aren't you using that? Well, you can see right now, it's it's showing up there. It's like, I can't uh, hold that steady, uh, hold it firmly, and stuff like that. I don't know if you guys uh, get that, but I'll show you how I actually was able to do two body clips on the back over here, instead of using this one one uh, middle one over here where the Russell two wood drive body would be on. So, yeah, a lot of rambling about the exterior, mainly the body. I do apologize for that. <laughs> but there's a lot of, I know, because I know there are a lot of people who are curious and how did you put the Russell 4x4 body onto a two wheel drive Russell? And there you go, there's your answer. Um, I'm honestly, I'm still not quite done with the body yet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the clips off 
and I just want to show you how was I, how I was able to put these screws and this, uh, they call it a skid plate, but I still consider this a roof rack and the wing in place. So normally on the Russell 4x4, if you look underneath, let me move this uh, a little bit. Uh, normally on the Rustler 4x4, if you ever, if for those who own Rustler 4x4s or have seen Rustler 4x4s in person, like just take a look at what, how they look like and stuff. Normally, all the space over here are, um, are, I don't, I wouldn't say I, I would call it a roll cage ish kind of thing. Uh, just to, it's a, these screws are mainly here. Uh, to accommodate the um, the clipless body mount setup. In this case, since this one is not a clipless body mount setup, I all I just did is just put screws and I just put some regular screws and use some uh, nuts uh, to screw them in place just for looks. I just, I my goal is to cover, I just wanted to make this car look like a Rustler 4x4 but have the simplicity of a two-wheel drive Rustler. So how did I get this, um, this wing as well, because normally the wing would be held in place with the clipless body mounts. What I did is I use uh, tie rods that would normally be on um, tow that will normally be used as the tow linkages or uh, camber links on two wheel drive slash rustler bandit stampede rustler and stuff. Um, generally, this will be used as a uh, um, as far as I'm concerned, I believe this was mainly used for camber. I believe I am not mistaken. So I used two tie rods and hold them in place on the first uh, two screws over here um, towards the back. And that will hold the wing in place. And as you can see, I'm trying to wiggle it. It's not going anywhere. So that's how I did it. But um, the body, uh, I'm sorry, not the body, um, the Although the body does fit, the shock towers, um, the shock towers, um, kind of, uh, since these things are kind of protruding, it will not clear the shock tower at all. So normally, the body would sit flat like that. But if I did not, uh, but when I put the um, tie rods on and put the body back, it was looking like that and yeah, not a pretty sight so what i did is by the way we're now going to go into the chassis um so what i did is i use a hobby knife and i believe i did use some scissors uh whoops but yeah i did cut um a, a small piece of the shock tower to allow the tie rods to fit in and it's still it's not going to it's not flimsy at all it's still ha it's still kind of rigid it's still fine it's not going to um destroy anything it's just a slight little tweak that i've done and that's not going to harm it real bad so don't freak out on that it, it's it's perfectly fine don't worry about it so yeah that's how i was able to put that put that body uh, put those uh, little tie rods on the back. All I just did was just cut a little piece of the ti of the shock tower, and there you go. I put the Rustler 4x4 body on a two-wheel drive Rustler. Um, how I, I did try to make it as low as possible because, like I said, the Rustler 4x4 is a, a, a quite different from the Rustler two-wheel drive body. So I also did raise it up a little bit, just a little bit. Um, by using one of these. These are normally spacers for the shocks uh, that you normally put on the shaft of the shock. All I just did is put that and use a long screw and screw it in with the um, body mounts. And I did get a little bit of, of extra height to it. So... That's how I was able to put the body on just snug, not like a really firm fit, but just good enough that the body is not flopping around. So uh, speaking of body mounts, let's go back to the back. 
on the back right there is you can see those are not rustler specific these are, are in fact are actually from the Fortec 2.0 these are actually for the front mounts for the Ford GT body um, because I also had some spare parts in there. Um, I was figuring out how am I going to put the body on, the Ruster 4x4 body on. And I found these two Fortec mounts for the Ford GT. And I'm like, okay, I'll just use those. And that was how, and that's how I was able to put two holes here on the Ruster 4x4 body to accommodate the body mounts. So there you go. Hopefully that's it for the body because I know I've been rambling about that. Um, about the body and stuff like that. It's just, I, like I said, there are, I know there are plenty of people who are watching this, like, how did you get the Russell 4x4 body on that thing? That's, like, pretty cool. I've ne never seen that done. And uh, and honestly, yes, I, I've, I did a lot of YouTube re uh, searching on how on how to put a Russell 4x4 on a two-wheel drive Russell. None of them had that. So I'm, I'm probably the first person, at least on YouTube, to ever put a, or at least should I say this, the first person who posts um, RC content on YouTube that would put a Russell 4x4 body on a Russell two-wheel drive. Um, may or may not be the first one. If not, if, um, if I'm not the first one, um, please let me know. But as of right now, I think I am the first person who did that. So, yeah. Anyways, um... Electronics, uh, electronics is concerned. I am, yes, I am running brushed. Sorry, I am not a huge fan of brushless when it comes to off-roading. Um, if that kind of offends you guys, I, I uh, honestly am sorry. And at the same time, I really don't care because this is my truck and I can do whatever the hell I want with it. So, yeah, XL5 uh t and titan 12 turn yeah i know it's not the greatest thing out there i can i can understand that but honestly it's not that bad really it's not and this is actually a uh, second gen xl5 esc because that is not because the new xl5 esc will not have this black heat sink and the difference between the the new xl5 esc and this one is this thing can actually accept 3s lipo and I actually would have to put 3S LiPo in quotes there because although this does accept 3S LiPo, it will jeopardize the ESC. So, um, I know what you're thinking. Why didn't you just go with brushless instead where you can actually use 3S LiPo to your liking? Well, here's the thing. I remember there are plenty of YouTube videos that I've seen with this XL5 ESC in action. On 3S LiPo, this same... Um, type of ESC, the same generation of the XL5 ESC used 3S LiPo, it can actually take it. It can actually do it. The, old, the only reason why people are saying that it will burn it up is on those situations where people are really heavily bashing with it, you know, like heavy braking and um, um, sudden accelerations, stuff, stuff like that. That's that's one of the reasons why people say, oh, don't go 3S LiPo in these old XL5 ESCs or else you're burn it up. That's from my experience. I I know there are people out there who will have something a bit different. I would like to hear that from you guys. Um, but at the moment, from in my opinion, I think this is okay. Because as long as you're not doing any like hardcore bashing with the XL5 ES, uh, ESC that can accept the 3S LiPo, I think it can still hold up to uh, to its own. I think it can do it. It's just don't go way too hard on it. Um, otherwise, you will burn it up. Um, and yes, I did try this out on 3S LiPo. And so far, I hadn't got any single problems yet, even though I drove it like two or three times. But I think this ESC will hold uh, hold up for quite a while um, but eventually that will change I will get another brush ESC that can actually take 3s lipo that can actually handle 3s lipo properly but at the moment this is okay and honestly that Titan 12 turn uh, 550 motor over there as you can see is actually pretty darn fast for and pretty darn powerful for a brush motor uh, some people say it's crap yeah, I mean, it's only crap if, if you're doing something stupid with it. But uh, in my experience, it, it's not 
it's that terrible. It's really not that bad at all. So, yeah. Um, uh, gearing, I believe I put a 22th pinion, I believe. I, I, I'm not going to bother checking. Um, I can always check anytime I, I want and probably make an update video on it. But I did put a decently um, decently sized pinion gear in there and a small spur gear. So I can do I can still get the top speed. And mainly this is gonna be more of a top speed run kind of RC, not and occasionally I'll do some off-roading with it because uh, I don't have a good dirt uh, dirt area near my house to do any dirt bashing with it. But if I do, I'll make videos on that. Receiver. That is actually a 2.4 gigahertz radio from a from an HPI. That is the T, the I'm using an HPI TF40 transmitter and receiver, and I do have an HPI transmitter for it. And yes, this Traxxas fanboy, wink wink, this Traxxas fan decided to remove the HPI sticker and slap the Traxxas logo on it. Um, probably HPI is going to go ahead and kill me for that. But, you know, nah. I, I, I'm not stupid. I know this is an HPI controller. Just just, um, just don't, don't worry, guys, if you think that I just turned that thing into a Traxxas. I still know that that's just an HPI. That's, that's still an HPI transmitter. Don't worry about that. Anyways... Um, 2.4 gigahertz uh, receiver and radio uh, for the H from the an HPI product. Um, this was actually given to uh, was given to me by a friend of mine, um, and as well as, as with the servo, the servo was actually given to one of my uh, a friend given from a friend of mine. Uh, it's actually a um, a digital steering servo that you would. Uh, one of those Amazon ones that you you can get for cheap. And I must say, that is actually pretty darn powerful for what it is. I mean, I thought this was going to be like something crappy, but it's actually pretty good. Uh, I, I am actually quite surprised about it. And um, yeah, I honestly really like the servo. It is kind of slow to respond, though. Yes, I can tell you that. But like I said, I am not really going to be racing this thing. This is mainly just a basher, just to have fun outside of my house or take it to a baseball diamond or take it to like some to a kid's playground and, you know, um, watch kids, you know, uh, drool over a 30 plus mile an hour RC car in front of their eyes or something like that. So anyways, uh, my Xbox is going off again. <laughs> Should have turned that off. But yeah, that's what I did to um, that. Uh, as you also noticed, that's not an, an aluminum aluminum uh, steering rack right there. Why is that? Like I said, low budget build. I'm trying to um, um, do a build without spending a crap load of money. And uh, I can tell you this right now. This is... is um, worth more than a rustler two-wheel drive rtr ready to run brushed edition okay i can tell you that right off the bat i know this is worth more than that but it's not terribly worth more really honestly it's not really that much um the only difference is is i can be able to build it build this thing little by little um without having to spend a crap load of money all at one time so at least this one is uh, perfect for what it is so um uh let's see here um suspension wise let's go talk about the arms oops that's little pebbles just came off came off the chassis i'll go ahead and throw that away i do apologize for for the long rambling but there are so many things to really talk about this thing um Let's see, uh, let me put the camera up a little bit higher. Um, let's talk about the suspension arms, the control arms. The lower control arms are RPM, are made of RPM. Uh, these are RPM rear 
rear um, lower control arms as so as with the front and these are not standard length rustler I do have a I do have one that's shorter and that's basically the it will look like this this one's actually for the stock uh, length of the a arm for the rustler it will look oh my god hopefully hopefully you can see that can you see that yeah that is shorter this one that i'm holding is shorter and um i later found out that the the talon the talon ext tires for the rustler 4x4 they are both front and rear they have the same offset and i did not want that because if you look at the car from the top it will it looks stupid so and also when i turn it all the way uh, turn the wheels all the way it rubs against the body and i did not want that so i decided to change the um, the front uh front lower control arms to to the wider lower control arms for the two-wheel drive rustler slash stampede and bandit so that's what it is and the front bumper not the stock rustler front bumper it's a rpm front bumper uh, better durability and stuff like that and as far as suspension is concerned um like I said, I did want to, I did use the red springs just to match the red and black theme on this on this truck. Uh, let me lower that again. Okay. I would say I didn't do a very very good job on it, but you know, it's pretty decently damped. Not the greatest thing, but it's not too terrible. Not too great, but not too terrible either. So it's pretty. It's decently damped, okay? It's not the greatest thing that you, you will ever see from me, but it's not, like, the last thing that you'll ever see from me at all. Um, uh, if you guys are wondering what kind of uh, shock weight, I, shock oil weight I've done that I put in here is it's 100 weight. Uh, 100 weight shock oil that I got from uh, TLR, uh, low C. I did have a, uh, I do have one that's 15 weight, but you know, who's, who's, who puts 15 weight shock oil, especially on a car that goes off-roading up? Please let me know if, if one of you guys do that. Um, I'd like to know your opinions on that. Anyway, so what else do I really need to talk about here? Mm, looks like nothing at all. Um, everything is um, um, all adjustable tie rods for a camber and tow and oh um i almost forgot one more thing is that's not running on oil light bushings those are actually running on ball bearings and those are ten dollar ball bearings for i believe ten uh ten ball bearings for only like less than eight dollars at amazon so yes, like I said, budget build. I don't really need to go go ahead and do like the highest highest price at all stuff like that just to do an art a simple RC build, and also wheelie bar just to have that Russell four x four look to it because this was like I said was intended for me to look like a Russell four x four because when you look at it from outside people would think as far as rc enthusiasts is concerned people might think that this is a rustler 4x4 running around but in reality it's not really i mean there are like i said there are a couple exterior exterior looks exterior details that would distinguish this my uh rustler two-wheel drive build to a regular rustler 4x4 the front bumper and that wheelie bar and also um, not having clipless body mounts. Uh, but yeah, anyways, that is that is pretty much it for the Project Eau Rouge. And I understand I, it's already half an hour in, of this video. I do apologize for that. I just, this video is really meant for 
just a, a like an overview on what I did to this Rustler build. And I can tell you this right now that this build actually started back in October into 2019. And I did not officially finish it until uh, earlier of January 2020. Why a long delay? Like I said, the, the benefits of building an RC compared to spending uh, $200 on an RTR right off the first bat, you know, it's more fun to actually pace yourself and just, you know, spend very little as possible and just watch your RC grow. It's just like, you know, in, in finances, you know, you save money and forget about it and you put more money on your savings and it grows. That's basically what it is. So anyways, um, like I said, I do apologize for my rambling about that. And if you guys are going to be like the kind of people who are like, enough talking, more, uh, I want to see it drive. If you want to see this thing drive, um, I would put a link in the description on of me driving this thing and you'll see what it looks like in action. Anyways, that is all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this overview of the Project O Rouge, my Rustler two-wheel drive build. Thanks very much for watching.